In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Fujifilm X-H2 or X-H2S for portrait work. And in general, I'm gonna give you my favorite settings, so let's get right to it. What's up everyone, I'm Pete Coco. I am a photographer in New York and a lover of all things Fuji, as you probably are as well if you're watching this. Now, if you just picked up a Fujifilm X-H2 or an X-H2S, congratulations because you've got an awesome camera. And I really believe that these are the, some of the best cameras Fuji has ever released. I've tried now the X-H2 and the S version. I have the two here and I'm just blown away by them. So today I want to give you my basic settings, but also my portrait settings. Um, and so this is the way I set up the camera when I want to take portraits, uh, which is mainly what I do. But a lot of what I'm going to tell you today is very good general information as well. So let's get right into it. Okay, so now the first thing you want to know about the X-H2 series cameras is, which you already know, they have a PASM dial. Now, no, nothing has been more maligned than the PASM dial. And I'm not crazy about it either personally. I don't think it's the best use of all this real estate on the top of a camera, but that's what it has and that's what we're gonna deal with. So the first thing that I recommend you do is start setting up those custom functions. Now, here's the thing that's, that's very cool about the PASM dial that's actually easier than if you have an older Fuji camera is if you set it to C1, it's just gonna remember your settings. So you don't have to go and re set anything else. Now, the first thing you need to do before you even go into the menu is hit the Q button. So if you hit the Q button, you get the quick menu, you'll see that you have shooting mode as your first option there. And by default, everything is gonna be on P for program. Um, now, I don't shoot in program, so the first thing I did is I changed that to M for manual. And so I, I do recommend, even if you're newer, to manual shooting, just do that because with exposure preview, you can see what's going on there. I think it's a good way to, to learn. So go ahead and put that on M, first step. And it took me a minute to figure out how to do that. I couldn't find a way in the actual menu to change that particular setting, but you just hit Q and you set that and then you hit OK. Uh, so now C1 on my camera is for photos in manual. Now, really with the manual, uh, the instruction book recommends is that you set to it a custom function and then the first thing that, that you're supposed to do, and I don't know why they set it up this way, it's a little silly, but you scroll all the way down the IQ menu until you get to custom mode setting. And there you can choose all seven of the custom modes whether you want it for a photo, which is a little camera icon, or for video, which is a little video icon. Now, you can change these how you like. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I like to do it, and I'm still working on changing mine around, so this might change a little bit, but C1 is always gonna be manual. And for me, C1 is photos, manual, with exposure simulation on, meaning that when I look through the viewfinder, um, through the EVF or through the screen, if I'm underexposed, the view is dark. If I'm overexposed, the view is overly bright. So the camera is gonna show me the exposure beforehand. Then I set C2 to my general video shooting. And then I set C3 to my studio shooting, which means I shut off the exposure simulation and I'm gonna set other settings that I want for the studio. Uh, so that's basically what you can do with these, these custom functions. Let's not get that deep into that right now but let's just go back to talking about C1. Okay, so you wanna make sure C1 is set to photo, which it is by default. And then after that's done, if you haven't done it already, click on the Q button and make sure you're in manual. I'm gonna show you why I like to shoot in manual. Um, all right, now let's go through a lot of the menus here. I'm gonna skip a lot of stuff. I'm gonna talk about a lot of stuff that's pertinent to what I feel is the best settings on this camera, um, having used it for a little while now. All right, so we're gonna go back to the beginning of our menu. And here we are. So image size, first of all, you wanna set your image size to large. And I like to shoot in three by two format. Uh, 16 by nine is like more like a movie. You could do squares and all that stuff. Some people like four by three, cause that's usually what we wind up cropping in, but I leave it at the, at the standard size of the uh, sensor. Quality setting, you want to set to fine plus raw. 
And the reason I like to do this is because later on, I'm gonna set the camera so that the fine, meaning high resolution JPEGs, will appear on one card and then the raw files on another card. And lots of times I'm not gonna use the raw files, especially if I'm just out with the family, but I just like to have that as a backup. And this, if you're a professional shooter, um, you really wanna do raw on everything and then have the second card as a, as a backup. But if you're just doing family stuff, or if you're like me, I am a professional shooter, but I do obviously I take pictures of my family, I do stuff for friends or whatever, I'm usually gonna shoot in fine plus raw because Fuji JPEGs rock, man, and we're just gonna use them. Okay. I leave my raw uncompressed because I have, you know, attachment issues with lossless, <laughs> with lossless compressed. I'm afraid it's not gonna be as good. So I just leave that where it is. I shoot in JPEG, film simulation, start on standard, and that's easy to change on the fly. Now, in the IQ menu, basically I'm gonna leave everything else where it is. Uh, even ISO, I'm sorry, uh, white balance, I'll leave on auto for most of the time if I'm just out and about in natural light. So we scroll through here. All of this is cool. We already looked at our custom mode setting and that's basically it for the image quality. Now, let's talk about the autofocus because here's where you really wanna tweak the settings. And I'm gonna show you the way that I like to shoot. And it's a little, the menus in the Fuji, the newer menus are much, much better than they were, but there's still a little quirkiness to them that you kind of have to deal with. All right, so the first thing that you just skip over is focus area, because look, if you click on that, it's just gonna show you the focus area while you're shooting, and then it takes you out of the menu, which is annoying. One bright side of the newer cameras is that when you click back into the menu, it brings you back to where you were, which was so frustrating in the past because it would just go to like the custom menus in the past. All right, anyway, skip focus area. Focus mode, I like to shoot on continuous autofocus all the time. There's very few times where I'm gonna shoot on single. And the reason why is because continuous is so good in these newer cameras. Now, continuous focus means the camera will Continue to try and focus on your subject, obviously. But the more important thing it means is that even if it doesn't achieve focus, it will take the picture. So even if the camera is not in focus, uh, it's probably not gonna do it, but like here, you can see I have my, I'm, you can see now that I'm filming this on my R5. But like if I wanted to take a picture of my own screen here, continuous, even if it's blurry, it will take the photo. Now, in the past, I never used that mode on older cameras because then I'd wind up with a ton of blurry photos. But because the focus systems in these new mirrorless cameras, especially like the R5 I'm filming this on or on the Fuji uh, X-H series cameras is so good, that's a great mode to use and the camera's gonna track it. Um, so you're not gonna wind up with a ton of blurry pictures like in the past. So put on continuous, try that. And now remember that you also have the button on the front of the camera here. You can press that as well. And then that will give you a direct menu to continuous or, or single. And the difference is single focus just means that the camera will not fire the shutter until it's focused. So I don't like that anymore, even though that used to be my go-to setting. So we put it on AFC, continuous, and that's that. All right, back into our menu. Now the next mode is awesome. This is a great, great mode about Fuji, and I love this mode. Because if you go to AF mode, you can, you can either pick single point, zone, wide slash tracking, or all. And the cool thing about all is that it lets you scroll through all the different autofocus modes without having to go back into the menu. Now you do need to set up the focus lever on the back of the camera here, the little joystick, but let me show you real quick what that actually does because the focus lever setting is in a completely different menu. We'll get to that later. So what that means is this. Now, if I, I have it set so that if I push the focus lever in, it's gonna select the middle focusing point. But then if I just push the focus lever to the left or to the right or up and down, you'll see I can choose the focusing point. Now, but also you see how the whole screen is highlighted in that green? That means that now you can change the actual focusing mode. Watch this. So if I just use the rear command dial, check it out. Now I'm in single point. Now I'm in single point, but larger sizes. So you can choose the size, right? Now I'm in zone mode where you pick a, a zone of the frame. And then if you keep scrolling, you can pick a bigger zone bigger zone, and then back to tracking, which is where you wanna leave it primarily. Tracking means that if the camera sees a face, 
it's going to track it. See what I mean? Even if it kind of, can it see my face there? More or less, but you see, it's going to track a face or an object, I should say. So watch. Look, if I want to take a picture of my camera, here I am tracking myself, my camera. Watch this. See how the focus box stays on my camera? So that's tracking. And I like that mode the best. And, and I'll, it also has to do with the touch screens, which we're going to talk about in a minute too. But part of the reason I like that mode is because then it'll track my subject, which again, I'm taking mostly people pictures. So I appreciate it tracking them, obviously. But you can also set up the joystick, which we'll do in a minute, and also the um, touch screen, which is another way to help you with that. So I'll show you how that's all set up as well. All right, AFC custom settings. This one you're gonna have to experiment with a little bit. Now it has all of these built-in modes multi-purpose, and then for different kind of obstacles for sports and stuff like that. Now the mode I'm using right now, which I've had success with, is custom, and here's how I set my custom mode. So I set tracking sensitivity to three. So I want it to, because the higher the number, it'll stay locked on, more sticky. So I want it to do that. I don't want it to jump from one subject to another. And then I have speed tracking sensitivity. I leave where it is, so. I don't want it to, to, to be even faster. I think it's fine the way it is. And then zone area switching, sorry, I have set to auto. So this is where I'm doing my portrait settings. This is the way it's set. Try it out, let me know what you think. If you have a better way of setting the custom modes for portraits, definitely let me know in the comments. That would be great because I'm always learning from you guys too. Now, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do any of this stuff. We don't, um, you don't want the AF point display on because that's gonna show you all the little green squares constantly, which is annoying. Pre-AF, leave off. Illuminator, leave off. Face eye detection. I like to leave that primarily on auto. Sometimes I like, to, if I'm doing portraits in the studio, I like to put it on the right eye because that's generally the eye that I feel like I'm photographing more than the left eye. But for general purposes, leave it on auto. And then subject detect, you want to leave off unless you're shooting animals, because that's for animals or objects. But off really is going to detect for people. All right, I turn on AF and manual focus. This just means that I can manually focus even if the camera's in autofocus, it'll let me manually focus. And then MF assist. Now this, I got to give credit to Chris from pal to tech because I learned this from him, which is set your focus peak highlight to red. Um, and I set it red high so that you really can see. Now what that means is when you manually focus, can I, is it gonna do it? Yeah, there we go. Watch what happens. See how I have that red lines there? That's showing you where the camera focuses. So if I want that lens barrel in focus, there we go. All right, so next we go focus check. I leave that off. Um, interlock spot AE and focus area, I leave that on. Um, and then the instant AF settings I leave as is. Everything else here I leave the way it is, except for the touch screen mode. So let's talk about that. So touch shooting, I don't like, because that means that if you're in this menu, I'll show you what happens. Touch, touch setting means that if I just push the button, it'll focus where I pushed it and take a picture. I personally don't like that. That's preference. I mean, it might, it might be a good mode for some of you for some purposes. For me, no. I put that on AF. So here's the next step. So now when it's on AF, what happens is I can have the camera in tracking mode. I can use the joystick like this to scroll around, pick the focusing point. But then I can even just touch the screen and wherever I touch it, it's going to focus. Theoretically, watch. See that? So now when you have it in touch AF, if you just touch the, button, the screen, it's gonna focus where you put your, where you touch, which is cool. So sometimes I like to use this mode depending on what I'm doing. Now the problem with this is, is now if you wanna once again go to using the joystick, you need to hit the little button in the corner on the screen here that says AF off. And now I can go back to using the joystick and doing it that way and also to my tracking mode. So just keep that in mind. But I like to leave that on. I like having the best of both worlds. Most of the time, I'm gonna use the joystick though. Okay, let's go to the next menu. So now we're in the shooting menu. I just leave most of this the way it is. 
Shutter type, I do like to put on mechanical plus electronic. This way, if I use a shutter speed faster than one eight thousandth of a second, it's going to go right into electronic, but I prefer mechanical in most cases. Uh, flicker reduction, I leave off. Now, IS mode, I change to shooting only instead of continuous because this way it doesn't drain the battery by constantly having the, IS, the uh, image stabilizer running. ISO, you can adjust with the button. We don't even need to look at that yet. The rest I leave the same. Flash functions, we're gonna skip that menu altogether for the sake of this video because we're not talking about flash, we're talking about natural light portraits. Okay, so now we're gonna go back into our menu and now we're going into the setup menu. Now there's a few things we wanna do here. Area, date and time, this all depends on where you live obviously. My menu setting, um, you can change that. I'm not gonna talk about that here, but you can change what you want in the My menu or also in the Quick menu and that kind of stuff. Actually, I think it's just the My menu on this page. Um, battery, reset, all right, let's go to sound. I just, I like things, I, I like hearing a shutter when I have the mechanical. Um, electronic shutter, I want to be off. Because if you're using an electronic shutter, you're probably doing something either super fast, which it doesn't matter, or you might be doing something where you need to be quiet. Like for instance, if you're taking pictures at a very quiet concert. Okay, everything else you leave there. Let's go into the view mode settings. And this you leave too, it's eye sensor, all that you wanna leave. I, I, so far I haven't changed anything with the brightness. This is how it came, auto plus one for the EVF. I'm gonna leave all this the way it is. Auto rotate displays, I usually click yes, and you wanna make sure you have preview exposure and manual and white balance. So what that means, as I said before, is that it's going to show you the actual, um, the, the brightness and darkness and contrast and everything of the image before you push, push the shutter. So if it's too dark, it's gonna look dark. If it's too bright, it's gonna to look too bright. This is the best setting if you're doing um, you know, natural light stuff outside of a studio. Natural live view, leave that off because then that's not gonna let you see your exposure simulations um, until you press the shutter. So leave that off. None of this we're gonna care about. Framing guideline, I like to use the nine grid frame. So I'm gonna turn that on because that's cool for portraits and all of that. Auto rotate, portrait, this, this is for um, in um, playback. If you want the portraits to be rotated, I like to leave that off. Focus scale, aperture, we don't need any of this. Here's the, okay, this shows you, this will let you choose what you want to see in the display. So I like to see um, the histogram, which was not enabled when I got the camera out of the box. So I turned on the histogram and I leave everything else the same. And because I'm getting to that certain age, I turn on my large indicators, which still aren't that large, but I guess that's all depending on your age. So I leave the large indicators on in both the LCD and, and the um, EVF. And we'll leave the rest of that, keep going through here. And then you can change your quick menu background. All right, now here's what I was talking about before. Regarding the autofocus, focus lever setting. This is a little different than the X-T4 and I don't like it quite as much and I hope they, they have a firmware update to kind of make this a little simpler, but this is the best way I was able to set it. So you can, you can change the push and the tilt. Now in the X-T4, if you just pushed the focus lever in, then it would, you could change your focusing modes like I did before and you can scroll around them. But in this, you gotta do it a little different. So I've changed it so that when I push the focus lever in, it goes reset to center, like I showed you before, and I'll re-show you that. And then I change tilt to edit focus area. So it's kind of a workaround because you, if you push, because it won't let you push, and also I couldn't find a way where if I push, it's like watch. If I do this and I push, it'll go back to center, right? Fine, that's what I wanted to do. The problem is that when you push, it doesn't let you change the focusing mode. So here's the only thing you gotta get used to, unless they change it, is I tilt. And now I can choose my focusing point, or I can use that just as a way to access my focusing modes, like when we changed it to all in the menu. So that's the little workaround that I've done. And that's basically it.
Not a huge deal, just got to get used to that, but I don't think it's as good as on the other camera. All right, let's go back to uh, button and dial setup. So focus lever setting, we did that. Now here's where you can change your quick menu, the Q button, you can change how many things you want to see and order them. That I leave usually leave it. Uh, function, you can change that too. Function, you can change all of the custom functions. And the thing that, I, I basically left this too with the way it is because this little button on the top here, the, the, the unmarked third button, will let you choose, uh, or by default I should say, it's set to turning on and off eye control or eye tracking. So I leave that the way it is. And so far I haven't seen a reason to change anything because a lot of things are the way that you normally expect them. Um, so I wouldn't change any of that necessarily. Command dials I want to leave the way they are. The direction I leave the way it is. All of this I leave. And now you do want to have it shoot without lens. You, you want to turn that on because if you're using a manual focus lens without contacts, then it'll, it'll let you actually take a picture. And then what you want to turn off is shoot without card, which I will never understand. Um, there's got to be a reason they put this in here, but they also have it set to default to on. So that means you could be taking pictures thinking you've, you've got a card in there and you don't. So definitely shut that off. And the rest I'm going to leave. Touch screen settings. Let's talk about that for a second because this is a little confusing too. So I like to leave the touch screen on. Double tap settings I'm going to leave off because I just don't find it to work very well anyway. Touch function I leave on. Now the difference between touch screen on and touch function on is touch function is when you swipe. So if you swipe to the left, swipe to the right, swipe up, swipe down, it'll access menus. And you can adjust that in that custom function menu. Touch zoom I leave off. I don't have a zoom. That's an autom automatic zoom, but that's what that would be for. And then I just have the general touch screen settings. Okay, here's another difference. This means you see the little camera symbol? That means touch screen settings in, in taking pictures mode, and then it has touch screen settings in playback mode. So I'll turn that on too. And then this one is important, uh, EVF touch screen area settings. You can choose a, the whole screen or a certain part of the screen where you can just, while you're looking through the viewfinder, um, just touch that part of it and it'll access a focusing point. So for instance, if I'm looking through the viewfinder, I want to focus on that, my camera here. I just push on that and then I can scroll it over and take the picture. So it's kind of like a little, just a little part of the screen that you can use to focus. Um, and uh, while you're looking through the EVF, you can kind of touch and drag. All right, let's go into the save data setup. Now in here, there's a couple of things you can do. Now, if I'm on a job, a professional job, I want to shoot everything in RAW, so I will set this to backup, meaning that card one, everything is backed up on card two. It's a great setting, then you have an automatic backup. But if I'm doing family stuff and things like this, as I kind of mentioned before, I'm going to set it to separate because then it'll record RAW on slot one and JPEG on slot two. So if you do that, uh, the reason why I'll do that, I should say, is because a lot of times if I'm just taking kids' picture, kid pictures of my kids or just a family event or just out and about with the camera, I'm probably not going to go through the raw files, especially on this camera because they're huge. But, um, and I'll just take the JPEGs and use them and tweak them a little bit. Um, but I do like to have the backup because I'm crazy like that and, and it's just the photographer in me. Uh, so that's how I would recommend using that if you're just doing family and stuff like that. If you're doing anything where you're getting paid, definitely put it on backup. Sequential just means it's going to take one after another. Now, if you put it on backup and hit OK, you're going to see that now it says no card. See that? But it says one, no card. So this confused me at first with my X-T4 when I first got it because what the camera's telling you is you want, you, the camera's saying you want me to back up everything, but you only have one card in there. So you have to make sure if you have one card in there that you don't have it set to back up, you have to have it set to sequ sequential. All right, well, that's basically, I know this wasn't the most exciting video, but um, this is stuff that if you take a few minutes to put this all together, to tweak this all, you're going to save yourself so much time, so much energy, um, and also frustration with the camera because it's not going to operate the way you want it to, and it's just... Um, things that you might think, oh, there's something wrong with it, but it's really just spending a little time setting it up. 
If you like this video, if you like my content, please go ahead and hit the like button. You can press it nice and gently. You don't have to smash it. Also, subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna have more videos on the Fuji cameras, more videos on headshots and portraits and all the other topics I like to talk about. And go ahead and leave me a comment if you found a really great way to tweak your X-H2 or X-H2S. I'd love to hear from you. Here's wishing you an awesome day. Go out and take some cool pictures and I'll see you soon. Peace.